All right. Okay. Here we are. Welcome to the IPFS weekly call. It is the 2nd of March. Um, welcome all of you, everyone here. Uh, this is going to be fun times. Today, we have Brendan and Dustin talking to us about what's new in query in 2020. Um, Brendan and just Dustin, would you like to take it away? Or just Dustin or just Brendan? However you want to do it. <laughs> I nominate Brendan as uh, uh, starting the conversation. Uh, we're also joined by a few other uh, query folk, uh, Casey and Rico, I believe, or on the call. Hi, query so, folk. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Brendan, I'll let you uh, kind of get it started and we'll pipe up when uh, appropriate. All righty, go for it. Totally. Thanks so much for inviting us. This is so nice. It's so nice to sort of see everybody. I'm going to um, share my screen um, and so hopefully this goes okay. But uh, if it doesn't, you know, Demo gods. Um, but yeah, so query in 2020. Um, we've uh, spoken on the IPFS all hands call in the past. Um, so I thought I'd give a quick catch up for those who are who have already seen it. Um, but if you haven't seen us, what we do before, feel free to ask questions to sort of fill in any stuff that we've missed. But uh, generally, we are a query, we do data set version control. Um, and our sort of big mission in the universe is to uh, make uh, data work open source. Um, hopefully, I, I didn't ask can everyone to see my screen. Okay, does that does that work? Hopefully, you can see this. Thumbs up. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, and so by making data work like open source, uh, we've been on a sort of like multi-year mission to sort of bring the idea of data set version control, uh, a set of tools that we think it deserves. Um, the biggest thing that we're sort of hoping to enact, like in in the world of software engineering, we have Git and GitHub, and we have really great tools for collaborating. Um, and that makes a sort of whole ecosystem of software development possible that uh, is just kind of not really the case when you look at the world of open data these days. Uh, this, the way we see open data right now is very open data portal based. People are really uh, sort of publishing, only really large institutions are able to sort of maintain sort of vibrant open data set sort of ecosystems. Uh, it's a very one way conversation and we're hoping to make it a two way one. Uh, and since we last talked, uh, we've done a bunch of stuff, and uh, a lot of that stuff has been positive. Uh, I'm here as a bullet list of some positive things that we've done. Uh, we've published a new tool called Query Desktop, um, which is an Electron app that uh, runs on top of our Query CLI. Um, I'll be showing you a little bit of that later. Uh, we've uh, actually started to grow. We've got real users, and uh, in many ways for us, this sort of reflects a change from being a sort of R&D project um, to something that is actually being used in the real world now, which comes with it a whole bunch of things. and the a lot of that growth has been in the last sort of like three or four months uh, where we're seeing lots of people show up, start to show up and actually use query for data set version control. And so the idea is starting to sort of catch on, which is very exciting to say. Um, we also launched Query Cloud, which is sort of our HCP bridging service that lets you look at uh, data sets um, that are published on query uh, on the regular internet without any sort of like uh, D-Web magic. Um, and we brought a lot of stability um, and sort of like <clears throat> really sort of brought forth the features that we think we need to sort of get into a system where people can actually start versioning and publishing data. Um, and so just to like give you a feel for what that looks like materially, this is what Query Desktop looks like these days. Um, we've got this sort of like built in network of, of data that already exists. And I can sort of, these are data sets that are currently published on Query. And all of this, obviously we're on an IPFS call, all of this, everything you're looking at is versioned IPFS data. Um, so I can sort of just come in and look at this data set of uh, presidents that are birth and death and we're seeing just like a list of commits. I can see them grayed out because I don't have them. I can literally hit this clone button. Uh, this is gonna grab this data set, pull it into my local repository, give me a whole version history and let me sort of see everything uh, under the hood. Um, yeah, and so like this gives us like a meaningful, we get like our classic sort of like GitHub desktop style, just yellow dots for what changed between versions. Um, we'll talk more about how this is gonna get better. But you sort of see everything we need to see to sort of get through versioned historical data. Um, look and stuff over time. I can build up a collection of data. Uh, creating data is sort of almost as straightforward. I'm gonna drag a CSV file really quickly over uh, this desktop application. This is the process of creating a data set. There's a new data set, cool. I can hit publish. Um, this is gonna be query engine directory of business improvement. Publish. We wait a little bit. This moves some blocks up into the cloud. Uh, I can hit this view in cloud button and we have a data set that doesn't work oh, because I didn't, I didn't put any metadata, but I can give you some other query engineering data um, that I think is really fun. Uh, and so like this is transitioning transitioning into um, stuff that we think is kind of useful for this people on this call. Um, just to do a real world use case of how this might work if you are in the engineering space. Um, so for us, we had someone file an issue a little while ago 
talking about how long it takes to add really large data sets to query. And so we're sort of dealing with some of our performance issues. And so when people start yelling at you about your performance, you know that something is starting to go monster right. Um, but this user was so wonderful. They went through and helped us sort of create benchmark real world user data, created a whole sort of like uh, graph of how long everything was taking based on that size, which is really exciting. And so we're seeing this sort of like spike into the sort of like 200 seconds on a sort of one gig data set size. Uh, we like they, they actually took with the next step and they created a data set of the benchmarks themselves showing how they worked documenting a readme of all their data how it sort of flew um and then actually now i actually have the data and we're actually as an engineering team able to look at some of this stuff and understand how this actually worked um and so for us we sort of thought we saw wow this is really exciting and sort of made for a fun use case to demonstrate today we took this whole concept and then sort of like riffed on what um, SCAM and the user sort of posted and turned this into something that runs in, in part of, as part of our continuous integration framework. And so now this data set that you're looking at is actually the result of, I can just cut to the chase, uh, this is like the actual data that's coming out of it and we can see, uh, hopefully I have that actually prepped. Yeah, and so then as I mentioned, all of this is actually posted and hosted on IPFS. So this is a visualization that is built into the data set itself of the current amount of time that it is taking. And every time we push to master, this data set is updated in CI. So uh, it runs the performance benchmarks, outputs a, in our case, in this case, a CSV file, uh, commits that to query, publishes that back, and updates this visualization. And so every time we push to master, we get this really lovely sort of like, hey, how well are we doing in terms of that sort of time? Um, and so this is just an example of what it looks like in CI. I can link to any of this if anyone has any details or wants to see any details on this. Um, on top of all that, all of this actually shows up in Google Dataset Search because we've made this sort of like cloud thing work properly. So if we search for query benchmarks, we actually see this benchmark data set uh, is being linked inside of Query Cloud itself. Um, so this is just like, I think, a wonderful example of bridging the sort of like IPFS universe, which like this this thing that Google that Google Dataset Search is seeing is actually an IPFS hash at the at the bottom of the stack, um, which I think is a really fun bit. Um, yeah, and then from there we sort of like think that that's sort of uh, hopefully that sort of forms like a concrete example of how this kind of thing is useful um, and where we sort of see this sort of like intersection between sort of the hard engineering and uh, why we think sort of dataset versioning is a valuable thing. That was a lot of really fast talking. That took way less time than expected. <laughs> um, uh, but just to, re oh no, I'm not going to stop sharing. Sorry, one second. I'm going to go back. Um, but yeah, just to sort of close out, um, this sort of lets you run your own data portal, which we think is really exciting and really sort of like brings that conversation from a, just a one way thing to a two way thing in a way that is drag and drop level easy. Um, and if you want to get really hardcore, you can script it all the way up, as we sort of showed you. All of this is actually on IPFS. And then just to sort of like close out uh, some of this, like where are we headed this year? Um, this year it sort of marks for us sort of just bringing more more features towards this uh, um, to, to the users that are sort of starting to grow. Uh, the biggest thing we're gonna bring forth is a diffing UI so you can now actually see the diff between each version uh, right inside of the desktop itself. Um, that'll be the next thing to ship. Um, on the sides, on speaking to features that are more interesting to this crowd, um, we have the concept of remotes, which exists inside of Git, but in query, remotes are just IPFS peers. Um, so you can push and pull to anybody who will allow you to push and pull to them. Um, and we're going to ship the idea of patch applications so that you can actually start patching a data set with a, the diff of another data set. Um, that'll be later. later. Um, but the other thing that we're sort of like really excited about is under the hood, all of these data sets are versioned and tracked in a way that we can actually tell you when your data sets are out of date. Um, so if one data set is combining two other ones, we can actually tell you, hey, this, this two downstream data, upstream data sets from you have been updated. You should rerun all of your sort of uh, scripts and get, get the latest version of your stuff. Um, and the last bit that we're sort of excited to bring to on this call and that we've been really sort of like, uh, what would you say, like long time reader, first time poster uh, about has been IPFS test ground, which we've been following for a lot of while, for a long while, and we're actually now starting to use internally at Query. Um, and we're big, big, big fans of test ground. Um, we plan to use it a whole bunch. Uh, I was really excited, I've been really excited about the idea of sort of simulated network testing um, since the Dev Summit uh, in Berlin a number of years ago. Um, but the, um, it's so exciting to see it come to life with the test ground project. Um, so we wanted to just, while we're on the IPFS call, uh, talk about how excited we are about it and how we're planning to use that sort of cycle that we just showed of continuous integration publishing as part of our test ground suite, where we're actually going to, you know, run tests, collect metrics, and then use that, publish the updated versions of that 
because as we know, a lot of these test ground tests are quite expensive to run from a machine perspective. Um, and so yeah, the first two case we're planning to use it for is like checking for read write conditions, uh, race, raciness that we think exists within our app, but we haven't been able to verify yet because creating the conditions where we think that raciness shows up is quite difficult. Um, and then from there, we're gonna move on to more sort of like performance benchmark oriented stuff in the peer-to-peer -peer context. Hopefully that answers everything, uh, or actually gets a, start, a conversation started, but we'd be happy to take any questions. Um, yeah, thank you. That's really cool. I've been trying to take notes at the same time. Uh, okay, so there's a question here from David on, what about using query to visualize the metrics that come out of test ground? 100%, yeah, uh, yeah, yes. <laughs> so David's answer, well, I, hopefully I answered that midway, David, but yeah, it's, hey, nice to see you and uh, very much you. looking forward to that, <laughs> absolutely. Um, I was really inspired actually by, I've never met Dirk, but uh, Dirk who has been working on the BitSwap performance stuff. Um, we've been looking at the code actually output by the BitSwap tests themselves and seeing if we can't turn that into a data set. Um, it was a really exciting of being able to sort of just refer to a specific git commit, run a whole test ground suite and say from commit to commit performance, um, really exciting. Uh, we're also really inspired by the Deno project. I don't know if you've seen Deno.land. They have an entire, every single commit to master has a set of benchmarks that runs and a visualization that runs against it. And so we're just trying to productize that pattern. Yeah, I guess if you've got questions, you could just type them in a chat and I can answer them or others can answer them. Sure. Brendan, maybe you can explain to people who don't know what test ground is exactly mm. what, what you mean when you say test ground. <laughs> Totally. Uh, hopefully somebody from protocol can link to the actual GitHub, but test ground is a, a way to, it's, it's a sort of like a orchestration setup where you can sort of simulate network environments, which uh, as everyone, many folks know, testing peer to peer things is very difficult. Understanding the interactions of a, of a immeasurably complex system is, is really hard. Um, and so one of the best things you can do is actually just spin up an entire sort of network and see how it interacts. And what TestGround lets you do is sort of like really get some introspection to what each node's view of the universe is looking like and measure specific things. Uh, I think it's rough equivalent of like a God mode view of, of a network. Hopefully that answers the question. I don't know. It's got metrics. It's really cool. Yeah. It's yeah. Kubernetes it's in there somewhere. Thousands of nodes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you can run it inside of AWS. It's big. It's small. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's uh, I, I think, like it's safe to say that everyone who is working on test ground is super stoked that um you guys are starting to uh to use it um it is it's is something that has been in development um really heavily recently so it's very new uh and there be dragons in there uh so watch out for them but um but yeah no we're really excited that uh, for you to be picking it up as well that's 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 really good news and we're really happy um that that's that that's happening so um so yeah, okay, so uh, another question. Uh, so from Matt Uber, uh, were you able to identify the main bottlenecks for the performance issues your users were complaining about? Yeah, uh, most of it's us. Some of it is IPFS ad. Um, IPFS ad's hard. Uh, Dustin, do you want to answer that in detail? You were the one yeah. that the most. Yeah, this is something I've been looking at recently, um, just uh, for kind of unrelated reasons. But there is a lot of stuff that we were doing that's just inefficient, um, but also, you know, saving blocks and IPFS uh, uh, can be slow. Uh, I mean, we're not, we're not really taking advantage of a lot of asynchronous work that we could be doing. We're like, I'm of the opinion we should just start saving and then just like, you know, have our UI show stuff and then, you know, it finishes in the background or whatever. You know, like we're waiting for things we don't need to be waiting on right now. Um, yeah, it, a lot of it is just like we also have to prioritize the work on making some of the large data set processing especially fast. So um, yeah, there's some theories, there's some ideas, but uh, nothing concrete we can identify just at the moment. But you have some graphs at least, so you can hopefully get there at some point soon. Yeah, I mean, step one is being able to prove that we fixed it, you know, like when we start working on it. So we at least have like a, a good base now of like where to begin. Yeah, measure it then fix it all good yeah. prove that nice. it's better yeah nice okay uh so we've got a, another question from simon here uh have you thought of creating a tableau web data connector wdc i don't know what that is but it sounds exciting to consume and do analysis <laughs> analytics on the your data sets directly and 
Simon also wonders if that's possible. Simon, thank you much for, so much for your question. We have very much, uh, this is an integration question, and I think it sort of ties into Debit's question below, which is, can I plug versioning into any other app? Um, integrations are a massive part of what we do. Like query on its own is really just the versioning bit. It's like, well, it's not just that, but that's really the thing that we care about getting super right. Um, so a question about like, can we do a web data connector for Tableau? That's very much the kind of thing that we're thinking about. And really where we see a massive opportunity for like open source um, to do, to behave the right way. Um, we've intentionally orchestrated all of query. So it's highly pluggable uh, from day one. You've been able to use Query, the Go binary itself is a library. You can import it right on top of it as you need fit. And that will actually facilitate the IPFS, repo connection, lock management, and all that kind of stuff on top of it. Uh, so as for making a Tableau connector, yes. Uh, currently it's in, uh, it's a, sitting below the Postgres integration connector uh, and below the sort of Excel raw export connector <laughs> um, integration stuff that a lot of people have been asking for. Uh, but as of right now, you can do a lot of things that will get you there really quickly. Like Query can take, any kind of data, whether it be JSON or CBOR or anything it supports and spit it out as a CSV, which usually makes for a nice, fast sort of like importing into other mechanisms. Um, so it's usually a pretty solid stopgap. Um, but first class support for something like Tableau is absolutely something we'd love to see. Um, yeah. And then as for plugging versioning into other stuff, totally. Uh, we very much, the nice thing about having you know, a content address system under the hood as a sort of primitive for a versioning system is like you, Query has a really nice sense of what is and is not uh, and it makes a really nice sort of pivoting point and then plugging that into other stuff is often just doing sort of data integration work um, as we sort of mentioned before uh, as for like native support of for query and other stuff not so much the first thing that we're really excited to do there is actually the apache arrow project um, which uh, is scheduled for later this year uh, but apache arrow is really comports well with the kind of technology that we've been working on and we've set our two roadmaps on a sort of collision course um, by using a lot of the same technologies under the hood. Uh, also, I want to add something there. Um, the, the default way that query works is that it's very much like a database where everything is back, you know, stored in IPFS. And it's kind of like uh, an opaque system where the user can't see the data because, you know, we're storing it and thinking about it internally. But we also have a mode where you can check out files in a Git-like fashion. So uh, what what you normally think of like the data set body can you know just be a file in your file system and that's kind of like our uh, easier version of integration you know you can you know move a checked out file into Excel or whatever uh, I'm not familiar with uh, the Tableau uh, WDC but that's something I'll look into um, but yeah the idea there is like we're basically watching files and as they change we can uh, we can offer you to commit stuff back into the uh, the repository that we're, we're keeping internally. So yeah, that's step one on how we do integration, just use files. Nice, thank you. Um, David, does that answer your question as well? Or did you, yeah, okay. All right, rad. Um, uh, there are no more questions in the chat, but I have a question. Desktop looks slick. Did, it's March now. Did, have you just been grinding on that for two months or has it been in development for a lot longer? <laughs> and, Casey, do you want to take this? Sure. Um, versions of the, desk, of the desktop app have existed for a while. Um, I think in October, November, we decided we wanted to go uh, sort of coalesce some ideas that we had and, and came up with a new version of the app. And then in the past two months, I think, was the redesign that Brendan Brendan is responsible for it looking so good. I'm responsible for it functioning. <laughs> Brendan's why it looks so good. Um, but yeah, thank you. Nice, I like it. Uh, it's just a, is it a, just a, it's, a, it's an electron? Just as good. It is, it's Electron, TypeScript, React, Redux. Um, All right, full stack. snappy words, I love it. Yeah, um, fancy, blazing fast with lots of integration tests and hooks. <laughs> all right. That's cool. That's what I like to hear. Um, all right, any other questions? Um, I will just check to see if there are any other. If you, if you have any other agenda items that you want, if you've got like a, an announcement or something that you'd like to say while we're here, um, then you can, uh, you, can, you can do that. Please add it to the agenda and we'll go over it. But um, is there any other questions before we, we head on over? I got one real quick. Um, for the desktop app, 
are you guys using the MFS or are you doing some other sort of interesting uh, file management fun that's different from the MFS? Hey Matt, it's good to see you <laughs> and great question. Uh, yeah, uh, no, we are not using MFS. We are actually still writing IPFS v1 decks. Um, uh, and that's for a number of reasons. We've had, we have a whole conversation about links and IPLD that we had um, that, it's a, it's a long conversation, but so yeah, as of right now, we, we have a sort of like hacked management system that actually creates the deck. As the deck is being created, we're pulling the hashes of the subfiles and like pulling them up into the actual data set definition itself and then closing it. Um, and so it's sort of like a purpose-built deck thing. It's using all the regular chunker and stuff, but we're not using MFS under the hood as of right now. So it's a sort of bespoke versioning system. But yeah, super fun to about Pinata. We got to talk at some point. It's, it's important. Hit us up. Uh, that's that's really interesting. What um what do you plan to move to MFS or are you uh, like are you too far? Are you too deep in, into a custom custom world right now? Um, and like what what would be like any the blocker to you doing that? The biggest thing is, on. yeah, Dustin, go ahead. Sorry. I, it's been on the roadmap for a while. Uh, just something we haven't been able to prioritize. Um, there was a, a bit where we were starting to make the move, but then just other things came up with, because, you know, we've got a bunch of pieces going on here in our, in our uh, kind of environment, our platform. Um, like, we're kind of doing things that are manually imitating how MFS is, is like, you know, working. Uh, uh, yeah, like, we're, we're doing things the hard way, I guess you'd say. Um, Nothing has happened yet where we've been like forced to do it. So I think that's that's kind of just the thing. We're just kind of kicking the can down the road for now. But we do plan to do it uh, once you know it seems appropriate. Uh, I don't know, Brendan. Do you have more details on what your thoughts are here? Yeah, there is one bit that I'd like to surface here because I think it's a really interesting question for this group. Um, we like Unix FSV1 DAX because we can put a file in there called index.html, and when you visit it, that from a uh, from the gateways, you see the visualization, right? So we were demoing that today. Um, from the IPLD perspective, we don't get that, right? We don't get the sort of like nice, pretty, hey, you're looking at an IPLD DAG. Um, can, how do I sort of somehow inform a gateway that this is the default HTML rendering? Um, as far as I understand, that's not, last time I checked with IPLD, that was like a, a question, open question about how we would actually do that. Um, and so if we can figure that out or if somebody can inform us on how to do that properly, that would be a massive help because it's a, for us, it's a bit of an either or, um, and it's the only either or that we can find. Uh, we're very much of the opinion that we should be not doing custom things. We should be doing the, the, the normal thing, um, uh, particularly in this universe where we're all sort of like a, a bleeding edge on a bleeding edge on a bleeding edge. It's, it'd be nicer. The, the more normal we can make it, the better. Um, but it's, uh, yeah, for us, it's been a, a bit of a question on how to actually do that. Uh, let me take that. Uh, hi, Brandon. So, uh, nice to see you, sir. Nice to see you too. Uh, so, the long term answer for this is that uh, an IPLD ADL will contain essentially a rendering component for the web as well. So you will say this stuff, when you plug it into an IP, uh, into a, something that identifies as a gateway, you also render this other stuff with it based on, you know, selection and stuff like that inside. Uh, this is like what the answer will be two, two years from now. You know, fingers crossed. Um, as far as what can you do today, uh, this is still an open question tied together with the entire Unix FS v2 thing, which is also an open question. Ask us uh, end of Q2 again. We'll then, do, we'll then, do. We have, we have uh, then, many questions then, then, about chunking yeah. and tag composition. There's, there's lots to, to be explored here. And maybe, maybe we should sort of make a point of opening that conversation up more because towards the end of this year will actually be the time where we start to ask these questions ourselves. Where we're exactly. blocked from a functionality perspective is like we need the notion of a link inside of query. Many of our users are asking for attachments, right? Like, can I add arbitrary file data um, to a query data set? And right now the answer is no. Uh, you can only, like query has a very strong opinion about how a data set should be shaped. Um, and that's intentional. 
but we would very much like to say like the whole machine learning space and, and computer vision space really needs to be able to say this is a data set and each of these cells is actually a link to a document that is contained within this DAG. Um, currently we have no way of saying that and the answer to that is obviously IPLD. Um, but right now we, we kind of can't, we're, it's not that we can't do it, it's just we want to architect that carefully. We, we're link resolution for us is a very important sort of like performance characteristic. Um, and so there's a whole bunch of stuff to talk about um, there, which could be really fun to re restart that conversation. Absolutely. Uh, j uh, just to clarify uh, one more thing about what I said. Uh, there definitely will be some sort of uh, like middle middle ground of how to get from point A to B. It's not going to be like you have to wait for this thing, you know, uh, that uh, allows for pluggable HTTP gateways. Uh, there is going to be something in between. We just don't know what it is here. Um, well, so one one middle ground would actually just be to uh, use metadata. Yeah. Uh, so like when we finally get Unix OS 2, uh, we will have like uh, arbitrary metadata where you can just link to anything. So then like the main link would be the link to like the some root node that points to both an HTML file for like the root, like to display the, the data um, and then also points to the actual data set. Uh, so if you were trying to download the data set, you would like traverse through the metadata to actually like fetch um, the data set itself. Uh, and the, like, even the HTML page would be able to do this in theory, if that makes sense. Oh, that would be delightful. We've had a number of users ask for like basically query JS where you have the same thing as like window.ipfs where you can sort of interact with and get a query like system. We have an API for interacting with data sets and this has been a, that kind of thing. It sort of eludes us because we have to figure out link resolution inside of the hashes. And so like we've been doing that again in the Unix FSV1 world, we can just sort of do relative references, which is how we obviously do embedded um, sort of self-contained websites. Um, yeah. But this is a whole whole thing. Yeah, the question here would be like, how do you actually name the things that are like linked to from the metadata, not from the actual like directory mm. itself? <laughs> uh, totally. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, and that's, I mean, I think we have a, a nice use case then because we've, the way we have handled all of this so far has been through convention, right? We, mm -hmm. every single file has the exact same name and has exact, all DAGs have the same layout structure, not from the perspective of blocks, but from the perspective of the naming. Um, mm -hmm. Everything's always called from dataset.json for the dataset definition, meta.json for the meta definition, always. Um, and so it could be fun to sort of look at that structure and as a sort of potential use case or example for metadata referencing sort of prerequisites. Really cool, man. Hey, so thank you. Um, we are kind of out of time for today, but thanks. My bad. No, 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 no. Um, we are only one minute over, so it's okay. But um, any other questions you have for Query, please get in touch with them. How do we get in touch with Query? Go to our GitHub, query-io. Go. Go to GitHub. Star stuff. Star right. stuff. It'd right. Be doing us a huge favor. <laughs> Star things and uh, uh, open issues and ask questions and, uh, and uh, have it check out their logo because it's rad. Um, uh, and um, yeah, just uh, just thank you very much for coming and presenting. It's been super interesting, and uh, I'm looking forward to all of the stuff you do in 2020. Um, thank you again, everyone, for coming, and we'll see you next week for another exciting edition of IPFS Weekly Call. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Bye bye, everyone. <laughs>